आप प्लीज अपना फ्लैग और डब्ल्यू का प्लकार्ड उठाइए हमारा कॉमरेड्स आए हैं कॉमरेड पंपिस को लाल सलाम इंकलाब जिंदाबाद दुनिया का मजदूर दुनिया का मजदूर Dear comrades, delegates of the C217 All India Conference, on behalf of more than 105 million members of the World Federation of Trade Unions from 133 countries from all corners of the earth, I convey to you and through you to the workers of India, militant class greetings. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation and the possibility to attend the 17th National Conference of Situ. I especially thank the President, Hemalada, a leadership figure of the Indian, but also the international class-oriented labor movement, who we have the honor of being a vice president of our World Federation. And of course, General Secretary, Comrade Taban Sen. Sidhu is a valuable member for the WFTU, not only because of the number of members it represents, but also because of its rich militant history and its stable anti-imperialist and anti-capitalist orientation. Its joining the WFTU had sent a strong message of hope and perspective in a particularly difficult period for the class-oriented global trade union movement. Rightly, Sidhu has a position in the Secretariat of our Federation and Comrade Devroy is one of the Deputy General Secretaries of the WFTU. Brothers and sisters, in nowadays the world is going through a phase of extreme intensification of political, economic and military antagonists aiming at controlling and exploiting the economic resources of our planet. And as always is happening, the peoples pay the price of the imperialist wars and interventions. After the Russian invasion in Ukraine, the United States, the NATO and the European Union, they attempt to present the situation as a war between liberalism and authoritarianism, thinking that this way their own criminal role in the developments can be hushed up. But so many bloody wars and interventions to promote their own selfish imperialistic interests are clearly visible in Palestine, in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yugoslavia, Cyprus, and so many other places. Cuba and Venezuela and Barcos, and so many sanctions and economic wars. Our answer to the hawks who they try to appear as pigeons is that the world peace is not being protected by even more militarism or patronage of all kinds of far-right nationalists and fascist. It cannot be based on blockades, sanctions, and economic wars. WFTU is fighting for peace, for an end to this war, 
and to imperialist wars and interventions in general, for the dissolution of NATO and all military coalitions, and for the abolition of nuclear weapons. The crisis of capitalism, it deepens and strengthens, resulting in the open violation of democratic and trade union rights and the dramatic widening of social inequalities, poverty and exploitation. The sharp and uncontrollable increase in prices of all basic necessities dissipates the living standard of the working people families. At the same time that multinationals and monopolies are reaching new records in profits. The results of the war of NATO and Russia and Ukraine attempt to be loaded to the shoulders of the working class. The workers all over the world refuse to pay for the capitalist crisis and the imperialist wars. Through remarkable struggles, strikes and mobilizations to defend the democratic and trade union freedoms, the collective bargaining and the stable, permanent and agreements regulated labor and for the satisfaction of the contemporary needs of the working people. WFTU affiliates are at the forefront of these struggles. The sharpening of state repression and authoritarianism is the response of the bourgeois governments to the just popular demands. Unfortunately, with the intolerance of surrendered trade union leaders and the cooperation of yellow unions, the arrest of the Secretary General of the International Trade Union Confederation, the ITUC, Luca Vicentini, for a bribe scandal, brings to the surface one more time the issue of corruption within the trade unions. In this particular case, the arrest linked with cover-up of terrible crimes committed against thousands of workers, many of whom lost their lives during their daily work. WFTU called the trade unions all over the world to protect the autonomy of their class orientation, away from bureaucracy, corruption, and manipulation by the capital and employers. The bribe scandal confirms once again that the absence of a substantial reaction to the neoliberal anti-labor policies from the side of the reformist unions clearly coexists with the corruption and the use of trade union positions for opposite purposes to the class interest of the working class. Dear comrades, brothers and sisters, concluding my intervention, I would like to wish you every success in the works of your conference. Your struggles to defend the, and expand the rights and improve the quality of life of Indian workers are important not only for you, but also for the workers in Europe, in Africa, in Latin and North America. The attack to the working class gains and rights, it is very hard and is global wide. The monopolies and multinational giants, while fiercely competing for control of markets and raw materials, at the same time, they are cooperating on the attack against labor and social rights. The weapon of the working class is solidarity and internationalism. For the workers who resist, who do not compromise with oppression, discrimination and exploitation, there is 
only one path of dignity, the path of the struggles. Keep going, comrades, for the defense of the political, social, and trade union rights of Indian workers with unity and decisiveness. And be sure that you can always rely on the solidarity and the support of the international class-oriented trade union movement against capitalist barbarity for a world free of imperialist wars and intervention without any kind of discrimination and man-by-man -man exploitation. Long live the working class struggles for peace and social justice. Long live Sidhu and the working class of India. Long live the WFTU. Before to leave the floor, I would like to give a present on behalf of WFTU to remember this historic Congress and this historic moment. It's the photo of our last 18th Congress. Yes, uh, on behalf of all of you, we thank Comrade Pambis, General Secretary of WFTU, for his inspiring speech. Now, comrades, we have all gathered here after exactly, almost exactly three years since we had our last conference, 16th conference in Chennai. And during this period, despite the difficulties created by the pandemic and the difficulties and challenges because of the policies of the government, we have all participated in many struggles, led many struggles, and we gained many experiences. Now, in this conference, it is time for us to analyze those struggles and the experiences. In some of the struggles, Hello. we have achieved successes. Hello. In many of the struggles, we could not achieve successes. So we have to analyze Hello. the reasons 
behind our inability to achieve the success of our demands and also the factors that led for the success, how we could succeed. And when we are doing that, we also, I think, have to keep in mind the reality. We have to objectively assess the reality and how our struggles, whether they were intended to change the reality, whether our objective was to change that reality, and how far we have been able to change that reality, and if we are not, what are our experiences. I think it is with this perspective, because changing the reality is the constitutional objective of CITU. So, when we want to achieve our constitutional objective of ending exploitation and changing the society, so we cannot say just that this is the reality today, and so because of that, we have not been able to do. So keeping the reality in mind, our effort should be to change the reality and how far we worked with this perspective, with this objective and what are the experiences. I think that should be the main uh, direction of our discussions in this conference. And when we discuss our struggles, the experiences, we have to keep in mind that we are not isolated. The workers in the factories, maybe they are working in the center of the country in NCR or whether they may be working in some industrial clusters or the our scheme workers are working in the rural areas or the construction workers or different sectors, whether organized or unorganized. We have to understand that our struggles and our experiences are not isolated and our issues and the demands that we have been raising in our country in different sectors, they are also not isolated. Maybe the exact issue and the exact demand and the exact context in which the struggles are conducted in different sectors in different states they may differ, but the broad framework or all these issues, all these uh, demands, they basically boil down to basic issues which are related to the wages, the working conditions, the rights at workplace and our basic democratic and human rights. So when we examine this, we see that these are the same experiences across the world. We have to keep that in mind when we are examining, analyzing our own struggles. We have to keep this in mind that in the context of the issues, the demands of the working class across the world. So with this perspective, if we examine our, the struggles during this period, not only in our country, we have seen the pandemic has affected the entire world, including the developed countries and the most powerful countries economically, militarily, like the USA and other advanced capitalist countries also. So despite that, despite the pandemic, despite the repression that is let loose by the different governments in different countries which are protecting the interests of the capitalist class, the working class across the world is in struggles, was in struggles during this period, increased number of struggles. Whether it is the USA, whether it is the Europe, including England or France or Spain or Italy or other countries, whether it is in the countries of Latin America or in other, even Africa, etc. All over the world, we see that unprecedented struggles have taken place. 
In the UK itself, it is reported that the struggles, more number of workers have participated in the struggles during 2022 than in the 1980s. So, in the USA, USA 2021 itself was supposed to be a year of big struggles. And in the month of October itself, we have uh, uh, referred to it in our General Council and Working Committee meetings that it was called Striketober in 2021 because lakhs of workers participated in the struggles. 2022, it was even more. It is reported that 39% more workers participated in the struggles in 2022 than in 2021. And what are the demands of these workers? The basic demands is the price rise, the control price rise, increase in wages, protection of the rights, the right to organization, right to strike, the social security benefit, pensions, bonuses, hours of work, etc. As we are raising in our own country, it is the same demands that are being raised across many countries. Because the price rise, we all have seen, the prices have uh, almost unprecedented, there is an unprecedented price rise in the last uh, several decades. In the USA, in UK, in Japan, in all these countries, the prices have risen highest in the last four decades, in the last 40 years and particularly the rise of food and fuel, the basic necessities of the common people. These have risen and even buying bread has become difficult. People had to choose in Europe because during the winter we all know the fuel is necessary to electricity, is necessary to warm their houses. So it has become such a situation that the people have to choose between whether to eat food or keep their houses warm. So it is that situation. And in during this period, the real wages have come down. It is not just the workers are asking for increase in their wages. The main thing is that the workers are asking for the rise in wages to compensate for the increase in the prices. But actually the real wages of workers have come down during the last several years. It is said that during the, uh, uh, in UK, in the Europe, real wages have come down in the last 20 years. In the USA, real wages, there is a stagnation in the real wages since the 1970s. So this is the situation. And because of the coming down of the real wages, the ILO also has mentioned about the uh, decrease in the decline in the real wages, how the real wages have decreased, and particularly for the middle and lower level workers, those workers who are paid at the lower level or in the middle income, not the higher level, higher paid workers, but for those who are in the lower level and the middle level, for them, the wages have further decreased and so much so that for the nurses in UK they said that they are not able to even uh, means they are skipping their food the nurses are skipping compelled to skip their food the wages of the midwives the wages of the ambulance drivers the wages of the nurses per year around 300 to 400 uh, uh, pounds wages have fallen during the last several years. So that is the main concern of the workers today, the fall in real wages and this. And what is the recommendation ILO is saying? That ILO in the latest global wage report of 2022, ILO itself has said, talked about the fall in the real wages and ILO has recommended that the workers have to fight. We all know ILO is not uh, a true representative of the workers. The name is Indian Labour uh, Organization, but it is a tripartite body where the workers are also there, uh, employers are also there and the governments are also there. And the governments in most countries represent the interests of the employer. So it is uh, a mainly 
uh, large component is the employer's interest. But even ILO has been forced to say that the workers have to struggle for increase in their real wages because only increase in the real wages will help in growth of the economy, in uh, increasing the jobs, in uh, addressing the issue of unemployment and also by uh, growth, by providing employment that the probability of recession and the depth of the recession also can come down. So that is the solution to address this recession and the slowdown of the growth. That is what the ILO recommends. But what are the countries in dif different capitalist countries doing? The most of the countries in the capitalist world, they are not addressing the concerns of the workers. It is not the way that they are following to increase the wages or increase the conditions, improve the conditions of the workers. In most of the capitalist countries, what we see is that to address this, more attacks are coming over the workers. So this, what we need to understand is that the uh, uh, situation where all over the world, the workers' wages are declining, workers are coming into struggles, and the, employer, the governments are not protecting the interests of the workers, but they are trying to uh, further attack the living conditions of the workers for the benefit of the worker, uh, employers. This entire thing shows that the system itself is in crisis. The entire capitalist system, the neoliberal system is in crisis. It is not able to provide any relief to the workers. The ILO is making recommendations. And about the crisis, we have been talking about the crisis now for the uh, wage, uh, I mean the price rise. What is the reason? The reason generally projected by the bourgeois economists is that because of the uh, COVID or because of Ukraine war, the prices of oil and others are rising. So that is the reason. But crisis was there not after COVID. Even everybody is agreeing today. The crisis was there even before the COVID pandemic struck. Even before 2020, when we had our last conference, we have talked about the crisis. And even the uh, prices of petrol, that one aspect is that the sanctions of the Ukraine war imposed by the imperialist countries. But even then, when the prices of petrol and oil have come down, the prices have not come down anywhere. So there is no link between the oil prices and the prices of the essential commodities. Even in Europe, where the fuel prices have shot up, many economists have told that the, this is not because of the shortage of the uh, um, uh, fuel, but because mainly because of the policies of privatization. Because the governments there have privatized electricity and because of that, the cost of electricity has gone up and people are not able to afford the uh, electricity uh, 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 for the heating up of their uh, uh, homes and residences. So these are the things. So what we understand for the present situation. There are certain unique features. On the one hand, we see that the new norm today is for the workers to come out into larger and protracted struggles facing the repression by the uh, employers, victimization, and also by the governments and the state missionary, like we are seeing in our own country. And at the same time, the attitude of the government is to protect the interest. They are not able to provide any concessions like earlier. Earlier, even in the advanced capitalist countries, advanced capitalist countries, there was one period, one time, when the workers could get some benefits. The governments was re were ready to provide some benefits to meet some demands of the workers. But today, that situation is not there. So this is the unique situation where on the one hand this crisis is there, on the other hand the workers are coming into larger. So this it shows the entire crisis within the system and what we have to understand is this crisis is not like the earlier crisis. We have been talking about crisis since many years. Earlier also we have talked about crisis 
last conference also we have talked about the crisis and we have seen several crises but this crisis unlike those crises whether in, whether in the 1970s there was a crisis then there was the uh, southeast asian crisis then the dot com bubble crisis the 2008 financial crisis this crisis is not confined to only a some parts of the world or some sectors it is encircled the entire world all the sectors so this is the feature of this crisis so this shows that the neoliberalism is a failure neoliberal policies don't have any solution to address the uh, issues the basic issues of the people of the common workers and others and this despite the vast advances the scientific and technological advances during this period earlier when there was any big pandemic or any vaccines have to be developed even now people thought that it will take some time to develop vaccine against the covid but within one year the world has been able to develop the vaccine against covid and how was it developed it is not by only some um, vaccine producing companies or some pharmaceutical companies the companies the governments have given help with the financial assistance of the people like in our own country they have also the biotech they have uh, produced the vaccine with the help of the government and similarly in other countries vaccines were produced with the help of public funding around 100 billion dollars of public funding was given for the production of vaccines but this was not utilized for the benefit of the people how we have seen during the pandemic vaccine apartheid was practiced the rich developed countries advanced capitalist countries they have procured vaccines and they have hoarded vaccines and they have refused despite the uh, effort and the, all the talk of uh, um, people everybody not being safe unless everybody is vaccinated they have not given the uh, patent rights to produce vaccine to the uh, poorer countries so they were not able to produce vaccine even in africa the level of uh, vaccination is very low so it is not just the vaccines this is only a latest instance but all the scientific advances whether it is artificial intelligence whether it is robotics or whether anything so all the advances and the scientific and technology they are cornered by a few rich companies advanced capitalist countries and thus the people who have contributed to the development of science and technology they do not benefit from these advances today there is no need for the increase in working hours the wfto has been demanding 35 hours work week we have also raised that demand but what is the actual situation in the uh, country everywhere the working hours are being raised and most of the workers working hours are not being applicable eight hours work or others they are not applicable and more burden is being and the technology for the uh, uh, on the organized sector also in the factory sector it is used to bring down employment permanent employment particularly and increase precarious employment so what i want to say is in this capitalist system we have to understand that it is not able to address any of the basic issues of the workers the wages issues or the other benefits and because of that inequalities have increased we have been talking about the increase in the inequalities in almost all of our conferences and meetings and the latest world inequality report it is saying about some shocking features that the share of the world's poorest half it is about half the share which was there in 1820s that is more than 200 years the share of the world's poorest half is only half of that which was there 200 years ago so how the inequalities are increasing despite the poor the workers producing the wealth of this country so let us oxfam report is there the world inequality report is there 
how the riches are corning even in our country the latest report says that 40% of the wealth is uh, in the hands of 1% of the population and the lower half of population has only 3% of uh, wealth so that is how the inequalities are growing so this is one so this we see that this is not able to the system is not able to uh, produce and not only we we are talking about uh, this crisis and these inequalities etc even the world bank and the imf they are also talking about the crisis you might have seen in the reports recently that how the imf has brought down the rate of growth how it has uh, uh, the estimates have uh, brought been brought down and this year it is hardly little more than 2% and the risks of going down 2% less than 2% are also 25% is what the imf says and the imf managing director she told recently that around one third of world's economy it is not going into slow down it is contract it will contract the estimate of imf is that because of the entire slow down in the usa in europe and also in china the major contributing the uh, countries or the areas which contribute to the economy there is slow down and because of this slow down one third of the world economy is going to contract further so that is what they are saying the world bank also is saying similar things but what is their solution they are not saying ilo has said that the wages are real wages we have to struggle for real wages but the prescription of the these institutions international financial institutions it is that you don't give any subsidies you don't ban exports you don't take any measures for control of the prices because all of these measures will distort the market so that for the benefit of the capitalist class the big corporates not for the benefit of the workers and not only that they are saying that wages should not be increased you might have seen christiana uh, lagade who was former imf managing director and now she is the president of the european central bank she has warned that the wages are rising too fast so we have to be careful we should not succumb to the pressure of the workers for increase in wages whereas what we have seen today is that the real wages are actually coming down so this is the prescription of the world bank and the imf which most of the countries in the developing world are following the capitalist world are following so in this situation what we need to understand is the new liberalism has failed and many of the countries despite this situation they are again approaching the imf and the world bank we have seen how in sri lanka there was a serious crisis the prices have shot up they said it was worsened because of the ukraine war but even before that there was scarcity the foreign exchange was uh, coming down the government did not have enough money to buy uh, to import the necessary food or fuel or the uh, milk powder fertilizers etc because of that the scarcity and the rising prices a big struggle uh, uh, this has a uh, movement has erupted but what is the solution the working class also joined working class also called for a strike there was a big struggle the government was forced to change but the new government has again approached imf for loan and they have negotiated same is the situation in pakistan same is the situation in bangladesh so in our neighboring countries across the world the governments which are following this neo liberal path they are only following the dictates of the neo liberalism despite it is being very obvious that this system this neo liberalism has failed and the capitalism has no answer for these problems and it is not only the economic issues even about the ecology now we are seeing that that we are talking about the global warming about the deterioration in the ecology and conditions all these things the climate changes how it is becoming hotter etc etc and for that also in this system there is no answer in the name of development 
they are they are resorting to deforestation and they are uh, following the same path and the burden of this instead of taking measures the rich capitalist countries the advanced capitalist countries which are actually the culprits of today's situation of global change and the crisis ecological crisis they are trying to shift the burden on to the developing countries and forcing them to accept the different methods the change a green economy etc etc so this also proves that within this capitalist system this capitalist path they don't have any solution they cannot resolve the crisis between the nature and the capitalist path of development so these are the this shows the entire failure of the system and this is what we have to understand when we are fighting on the demands of the workers in whichever sector they are in our own country in different states in different uh, areas or different sectors whether it is the question of wages whether it is the question of recognition of the scheme workers as workers whether it is the question of protecting the basic rights to organization and uh, collective bargaining and collective action by the workers implementation of labor laws whether it is the question of labor codes all these are connected with the policies that are being pursued by the governments in different countries including our country and the system itself so unless we create this awareness among the workers among our members and also in the entire working class we will not be able to improve the conditions there may be some achievement in some sectors to some extent but the exploitation will continue the attempts of the government and the ruling classes to suppress struggles to weaken the trade union movement will continue will not be able to achieve our constitutional objective and that is the lesson we have to learn from the global struggles so on the one hand what we see today struggles are there struggles are increasing but at the same time just struggles are not enough to change or bring about any change in the socio economic conditions of the people that by just struggles are not going to transform the socio economic conditions so for that we have to fight this ideologically also in many countries what we say even in europe we have talked about the struggles of all sections of the workers the rail workers the transport workers the mine workers the nurses health workers education workers government employees postal employees etc etc but even there when the unions leading the struggles do not have a proper political ideological perspective there we see that the right wing is also growing in many countries you see in sweden or whether it is in uh, france whether it is in germany whether it is in belgium italy in all these countries many big struggles have taken place but at the same time there is growth of the right wing in uh, france le pen's right wing party has come as the major opposition party in italy we find the prime minister belongs to a party that is supporting muslimi so similarly in sweden also recently a right wing the government has uh, they also are participating in the government a right wing force so in many countries this is the situation but at the same time where the union trade union movement or the working class movement is led with a proper perspective raising the demands of the common people and including them also we find that there is certain change and a advance of the left wing also in latin america we have seen during this period after our conference in many countries left or progressive governments or even in countries like chile where a communist party also is part of the government such governments have taken place so in chile what is our experience what we have seen the struggle started with only uh, the issue of rise in the transport cost with that different sections the students the women and the workers have joined and gradually the demands have raised and the 
uh, struggle was against the neoliberal policies. And because of the struggles, the demand for change in the constitution, a constituent assembly, and then a new constitution has come. They have constituted the new constituent assembly and they have formed a new constitution, also drafted a new constitution. Of course, there were some uh, demands that it has to be changed, it could not be passed, but it was only on certain demands uh, or some certain aspects of the constitution, not entire direction of the constitution. So that way, and recently in Brazil, we have seen Bolsonaro was defeated and Lula has come to power. And such situation is there in Honduras, in Colombia, in several other countries. But even there, we have to understand that the right wing is not keeping quiet. What are we seeing today? In Peru, there was a left uh, progressive government which has, was, was elected. But now the right wing forces are trying to uh, detail and they have forced the president to resign and arrested him and another lady has been uh, um, nominated as the president. And against that the working class is struggling, working class is mobilizing, they are fighting against that, demanding that this right wing government should not be there. They, they also want constitution uh, to be changed, constituent assembly etc. etc. And even in Bolivia, we have seen, Brazil, we have seen what has happened recently, how the right wing uh, uh, bombarded or they went and occupied the palace, uh, the president's palace and other offices, etc. So this where we are, the working class is not vigilant. We cannot say that even in Brazil, where Bolsonaro is defeated, Lula did not come uh, into power in the first round. Everybody was expecting that in the first round itself he will get enough votes. But even in the second round, it is marginal. Only a little more than 50%. Whereas Bolsonaro has got more than 49%. And the Congress, both houses of the con Congress are uh, won by the right-wing forces even in Brazil. So this is the danger what we face today. Struggles are there increasingly, but at the same time, Unless the struggles are led with a proper ideological political perspective for an alternative for the system, the right wing is utilizing the same discontent among the people and it is trying to uh, project itself as anti-establishment and utilizing that anti-establishment sentiment of the people, it is coming to power and implementing the same policies. And because of this, the ruling classes, the capitalist class is supporting the right wing in many countries. Not only in our country, in many countries it is with the support of these ruling classes, the capitalist class, that the right wing is coming into power or gaining influence. So this is when we are struggling on the demands of the workers. The lessons we have to draw today is that we have also to struggle against the system to struggle against the right-wing ideology and for an alternative. It is not that there is no alternative. We have the socialist system and we are seeing the progress of China, how during this period, during the period of uh, this crisis, this pandemic, China has achieved its first centenary objective and it has eliminated absolute poverty. I am not going into the details. But every year, during the last decade, more than one crore jobs have been provided in the urban areas in China. So housing has improved, health facilities have improved, uh, the, um, what to say, uh, age uh, has improved. So all these things, in different aspects there is improvement and socialist China. Though there is the pandemic which has started early and now because of the withdrawal of the zero COVID pan, uh, policy there has been spread of the disease but even then now it has reached the peak and they say that the, it has been controlled and the economy despite all this the economy is growing compared to many other countries slowest for China for last many years but even then the economic growth was 3% uh, according to the latest this thing. So this is the alternative where the people, the interests of the people are kept. In our own country, we see the left and democratic government in Kerala. How it is within huge constraints within the existing constitution, our constitutional system, 
within because even despite the huge constraints the ldf government is trying to protect the interests of the workers including the migrant workers the poor and other through different types of pensions the welfare boards trying to protect the minimum wages and their collective bargaining rights etc etc so this is the alternative and because of this because there is an alternative and socialism is the alternative and the capitalist class does not want socialism to be uh, g- gaining influence among the workers and the people they are trying to isolate china and also uh, different types of machinations and on the other hand we see that the more and more youth and young people they are also being attracted to the idea of socialism even in the usa socialism today uh, is receiving more favorable a response from the young than it was in 1940s when soviet union was there and the socialist system was there and it was in heyday even then the young in america they were not so favorable to the socialist ideas but today more young people are favorable to the idea of socialism and more people are getting uh, what to say disillusioned with the capitalist system particularly the young the black and the others so because of this the usa is trying to isolate we see how um, different machinations different uh, uh, pacts are being there how india and other developing countries are also being dragged into so this is what we need to be very clear to project this alternative among the workers and the same thing what i have told we'll discuss in detail in the general secretary's report but broadly we see the same situation in our country where the bjp led government is implementing neo liberal policies with more aggressiveness and also on the other hand trying to suppress the rights of the people using all the entire state machinery the different laws the cbi etc etc and also through its divisive machinations by rss today we have to be extra careful we'll be discussing communalism the danger of communalism in a commission paper also but at the same time when we are fighting against the neo liberal policies we have also have to create the danger of this communal divisive forces because the workers are also being influenced more and more workers are being influenced by the uh, rss and its ideology in the public sector in the uh, state government employees others in the private organized sector but not only in these sectors even in the organ- unorganized sector we have a very strong movement among the scheme workers in the country but are we able to bring them closer to the ideology of citu many of them are under the influence of the rss and this they are adopting various methods that is true but we have also to develop our own methods and approach the workers and create this awareness of how they don't have any alternative policies and they are trying to divide to weaken our unity and disrupt our struggles this is the basic objective of the ruling classes unless we create this awareness among the working class of our country we may be conducting many struggles many heroic struggles have taken place in our country also during this period facing lot of repression that we will be discussing but despite that when we see when the elections come what is the attitude of this government in some states where non bjp parties are there in power in the state government there when the workers are disillusioned disillusioned or they are not uh, happy they are discontent against the policies of this government they see bjp as the alternative which is a very dangerous thing so that whether what does it indicate whether we have been able to create this awareness among our members and our uh, working class in general now even in our own members not to talk about the working class in general so i think comrades this is what we need to discuss here without creating that awareness we cannot mobilize the workers we cannot unite the workers and we cannot take the struggles to united struggles to a higher level of defiance and resistance the last conference has given that call we have to try to implement that to certain extent but we cannot say that we have been very successful to take the united struggles to a level of defiance and resistance 
so what is the weakness what is the weakness in the political ideological understanding of our uh, members what is the weakness in our organizational structure organizational methods of organizational functioning all these things need to be discussed and our slogan the implementation of our slogan reach the unreached and link up the issues with the policies and expose the politics that determine the policies this we have been talking about in all our forums but whether we have been able to implement this at the ground level i think these should be the issues which this conference needs to deliberate and discuss and come to certain concrete conclusions and tasks which will guide us in the next 3 years so that we can strengthen the citu we can strengthen the entire trade union movement and the united movements we can also strengthen the unity of the workers and peasants which we have been trying to do in the last 3 years earlier also we have tried but in the last 3 years since the uh, kisan struggle with the, under the sayukta kisan morcha more attempts were made and more initiatives were taken by the working class and particularly our citu so how to further strengthen this unity of the workers peasants and agriculture workers and take it to the grassroots level not just some unity at the national level or state level but we have to take it to the grassroots level how to do that i think comrades these are the issues that we need to deliberate uh, in this conference so with these words i thank you all and uh, conclude my address thank you